Hello all. Today I'll talk about step-by-step -step setup of Microsoft Windows 2019 failover cluster. This particular tutorial is recorded on Windows 2019 evaluation version and VirtualBox 6.1.30. Both of these softwares can be downloaded freely without any license restrictions. The My Setup includes three machines, Win19DC, the first machine, Win19C1, and Win19C2. The C1 and C2 will be the cluster nodes, while DC is a domain controller. What I have also done is like, the domain controller will be also used as the file server. You can, in your environment, you can have a file server, which is different from the domain controller, but to make the life simpler, to reduce the complexity, what I have done is like, I have kept the domain controller as the DC as well as the file server. The IP address of all of these three machines are Windows 2019 machines, evaluation version, and the IP address is 109 for the DC, 101 for the node one and 102. These are using the bridge adapter. I will explain what is the bridge adapter. Uh, and this particular machine will be used as a node one and this particular machine will be used as a node two. To start with what I have already done is like I have already installed Windows 2019 evaluation version. That's the only thing that I have done. You can you, you can keep any host name because over the time we are going to change the host names as per this. So you can keep any host name and adapter type. What I have chosen is bridged adapter. So this is the machine. I'll show you the settings. Go to the network and you can see that it is a bridged adapter. That's what I have used for this particular lab. This particular machine will be cloned in three machines. So, so make three clones of this machine. This machine is just a base install of Windows 2019 evaluation version. And this machine will be cloned as three different machines, the virtual Win19DC, then the Win19C1 and Win19C2. And then what we are going to do is set up the IP address. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this. And this is the Win19DC. And when I clone, I will say include all network adapter MAC addresses. So click on next and clone it. What I'll do is like the cloning has already started. So I'm going to open one more session and then I'm going to say clone. And this time I'll say C1 and exactly same include all network MAC addresses and full clone. Okay. And then I, I will also launch one more session. So these are total three sessions, the DC, the C1 and C2, so I'm cloning three machines together. So make a clone, this time give name as C2, include all network adapters, click next, full clone and say clone. So right now the clones are happening of three machines. So the cloning is happening. Once the cloning of the machine is done, then what we have to do is not for the first machine, for the second machine and third machine, we have to generalize, we have to use the sysplap utility why we have to do that is because the machine ID will be same for all these machines because we have just cloned them and they will not be able to join to the AD and the failure cluster is going to fail. So we will do the sysprep. You can do the sysprep via the GUI or you can do the sysprep via this command. I will show you for one host, I will do it via the GUI method and for the other host, I will do it via the the, the command line method. So that's what we are going to do. And the cloning is happening. It says nine minutes, but it's not going to take nine minutes. So give it a minute. There are so many other things that we are going to do. So that once the, the this part is done, what we are going to do is we are going to set up the domain controller, the first, and we will add a feature called AD. Also, because I already mentioned that domain controller, we I'm going to use as a file server. So I'll add another feature called iSCSI target server. So these are the two features that I'll be adding to the domain controller. So that's cloning is done. The next thing that we'll be doing is these are the shared disk for the payload cluster, one quorum disk of one GB and data disk of 20 GB. And we will add the IP addresses of two nodes. So these two nodes should be able to access the, those disks. Then what we are going to do is we are going to set up the node one. The, the node one, what we are going to do is we are uh, the IP addresses already. If we have not changed, okay, we are uh, definitely we have not changed because we just generalized it. So we will change the IP address to 101, the gateway to 1.1 and DNS to 109. So this is on the node one. Once the IP address is changed, then we are going to add the machine to the domain. And when we add the machine to the domain, that time we will change the machine name. 
the next thing is we are going to log into the SCSI drive, the SCSI drive that we created here, the shared disk that we created here. We are going to log in to those SCSI drive from node one as well as node two. So whatever steps I'm doing on node one exactly. And then finally the failover cluster role, we have to install that as well. So this is what we are going to do on node one. Exactly same thing we have to do on node two. So the generalize already I have done. I do not know why I have mentioned it here. I've already done it. The networking, we will be setting the IP address 102 exactly and rest all remain the same. The node 2, I will say Win19C2, so I'll give the name as Win19C2. We will log into the SCSI drive. We will add the failover cluster role. We can use the PowerShell or we can do it manually. Reboot the machine and then what we are going to do is like the format the disk on any node. You can choose any node. So we have to do it only one because it's a shared disk. So if we format the disk on either machine, then it is going to it's going to replicate on another node. So we are going to bring the disk online, create the volume, queue the disk letter. So this is what we are going to do. And finally, once all of that done, we are going to validate using the clue admin. We are going to create our cluster and we'll give whatever name we want to give. We can give whatever name to the cluster, whatever IP we want to give. We can give that IP and we are going to add the two nodes that we created to the cluster. Before creating the cluster, definitely we have to run the validate cluster configuration. So that's that's what we are going to do as part of this video. So we have done the first part is make three clones of the machine that is done. See the first I'm going to close this extra virtual box gains. We do not need this base machine. I'm going to remove it. I'm not going to delete it. I'm going to say remove only. So now we have got three machines, the DC, C1 and C2. The these are exactly same clones. So now we, I'm going to log into this machine, the first machine. So what I'll do is I will start all these three machines together. And that's going to take some time. The three machines start is because I'm starting three different machines at the same time. It's going to take some time. So starting DC, then starting C1. And now I'm, I'm going to start. OK, I'm going to start the C2. So once all of these three machines are started, OK, then first thing that we have to do is for the first machine, the domain controller, we will be setting the host name and the IP address. And for the second and third machine, we are going to do the generalize. So for the second and third machine, we are going to do the general. We do not have to do the generalize for the first machine because that's a unique machine. This this is the clone of the original machine, but this machine is not going to be part of AD. These two. Obviously, this will be a domain controller, but th this is the unique machine and these are clone machines. So I'm going to do for this and this. So all three machines are starting right now. I'll pause the video and I'll come back when the machines are started. I'll stay here. As you can see, all three machines are started. First, second and third three machines are started. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the first machine. The name of that machine will not be Win19 DC. Did I give win 2019? Okay, how did I give that? Okay, fine. That's no problem. Whatever we give outside for the cloning, that doesn't matter. So this is the first machine. I've logged into the DC. This machine I'm going to set up as a domain controller. So what we need to do is the first thing that I said that we have to change the IP address and the host name. So I'm going to do all of that together. So open the network setting and at the same time, right click on the PC. I'm doing multiple things. Uh, right click on the properties. And also change. OK, so I'm, you can see the host name is Win19. We have to set it to Win19 DC. So I'm going to copy this. Change settings. Change. I'll say the computer name as Win19DC. Domain we have not yet created. So let's click on OK. It's, it's going to say that this needs a restart. I'm going to say OK, but I'm going to say description also. I'll change it so that description matches the computer name. Say apply. Restart now. Restart later. I'm going to because I have to do one more thing. I have to change the adapter options. I'm going to change that. Right click on it. Click on the properties and here ipv4 that i'm going to use ipv4 click on the properties it's already set you can see that 109 that's what i'm going to say default subnet mask 255 and the dns server matches 
with the IP address. So the DNS server matches with the IP address of the server. So that's done. Okay, that's done. Close it, close it. And then we are going to, because we have to do some work on the second node and third node. So I'm going to restart this machine. So for the host name to change, so that's done. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the second machine and enter the password. I'm going to go to the third machine, enter the password. On the second machine and third machine, what we need to do, I have already explained, we need to generalize this machine because this is the clone of this. So we, one machine, I will show how to clone it using the, using the, uh, GUI method and on another machine, I will show you how to use the command line method. So on this machine, I'm going to say right click on it more and run as admin. And once it appears and here, just give it a minute for it to appear. My machine is not so powerful. So on this machine, I'm going to right click. No, not, not this way. I'm going to do it this way. On the second machine, I'm doing it. Okay, for some reason that command win. Okay, Rah, win did system 32. Okay, so instead of doing that, what I'll do is uh, okay, that's fine. I can type this command. Oh, that hang it actually. So that's fine. Okay, so what I'll do is like I will go here. So on this machine, I will use the GUI method. So run as admin, enter system oob generalized so we have to choose these options and reboot so it's going to once this is done it's going to reboot the machine so click on ok so that's started so now whatever this particular whatever settings the host name right now if you see the host name is uh, how do i show it to you so right click on th this actually i wanted to launch the command prompt but i know that it's going to hang it's going to take some much time so right click on it, the properties, and you can see the host name is Win19. The original host name is going to change because we have initiated the sysprep. So that it's going to use some default host name. And once this is done, it's going to reboot it. So then what we have also mentioned that we have to do the same thing on another node. So on the first node, I thought of doing it via GUI method. On the second node, I thought of doing it via the command line method. But now I'm doing the command line method on this node and right click on it and I'm saying generalize sysprep, generalize reboot OOB. So exactly same option that we chose via the GUI. I'm going to do that. I'm going to press the enter and that's done. So now it's doing the generalize on C1. It's doing the generalize on C2. So you can see it's doing via the command line on C1, via the GUI method on C2. The domain controller is started. So let me go to the domain controller, enter and passwords so let me enter the password and that's going to take some time so i've entered the password we change the host name of this machine it was win19 and we change the ip address that's what we did so if i launch the command prompt and it sh we should be able to see the host name now is win19 dc so that matches to what we said so that is good the host name is changed as i mentioned the once the host name is changed on the first machine now it's time to set up our domain controller the win19 dc however my system is not so powerful so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pause the video and come back once uh once all of this is done okay so i'll wait for this to finish so that I can initiate that or let's let's actually start it actually. Uh, so what I'm going to do is add roles and features. Click on next. Click on next. Then we have to choose Win19 DC, which has got 1.109. So click on next. So two features I'm going to add. To, so active directory domain services and iSCSI target server. Because this particular machine will be used as a DC as well as file server. So I'm going to set up the domain services as well as SCSI target server on the same machine. So we have to choose the active directory domain services add feature as well as right, expand on this, expand on this and this one. And then we are going to say uh, the iSCSI target server. Okay. And 
next so okay let me see what i've chose so i've chose the domain services and this and next and next and i think i did a mistake let's do it again so click on this click on add roles and features click on next click on next click on next click on active domain services add features expand this expand this and ask as the target server add features and click on next so we are adding two features together click on next click on next and restart the destination server automatically if required click on it say yes and say install so that is started the installation has started this reboot after the oob is started this reboot after the oob is started and the installation of scuzzy file system and active directory is started on node one so we are doing three actions together the first action was this one the second machine oob the third uh, okay why did i mention the second machine again this is the third machine oob and then what we are going to do is we are doing we are setting up the domain controller so i have ran install i'm installing these particular features once the ad is done we will be promoting this computer to be a domain controller so what i'll do now is i will pause and come back once this is done once this machine is restarted and once this machine is restarted so it's it, since my laptop is not so powerful it's going to take some time so right now the time in my watch is 8 19 and I should be back by maybe 8.25 or 8.30. So I'll pause the video and come back. As you can see, the, the add features is still running. It's not completed. But what completed is the generalized thing. The, 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 the generalized for the second machine and third machine that's finished. And you can see this is a C1. And it prompted us to select the language and the password. And again, this is the C2 and it's similar so what i'll do click on next this is the second machine click on the next and accept the license give the password of your choice whatever password is comfortable with you give the password click on finish and it's doing that and also do the same thing on the second machine the c2 because we generalize that machine as well so accept the license give the password of your choice and click on finish and that's done and now what we are going to do is insert control i'll delete we are going to log into the c1 the first machine and we are going to do the same thing on this machine as well so we are going to okay the next thing that after the generalize and after the setting up the dc and the disk we have to move to setting up the ips on node 1 and setting up the ips on node 2 while this is happening while this is happening we can definitely go ahead and set the ips and that's logging in so i'll come back when the machine is fully logs in at this moment the installation is completed on node 1 i have logged to the it's still logging on node sorry the installation is completed on dc the iscsi target and ad services is completed the node 1 i have logged in the node 2 i have logged in what i'll do now is you can see there is a hello icon here so this icon says that we have to promote so i mentioned here that we have to promote this particular computer to be a dc so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to go to my dc and i'm going to click on this hello button and then promote this server to a domain controller so click on this and then wait for it to appear so while that appears okay that's appeared click on add a new forest give the name of your choice we are the dba guys so i'm going to give db.com that's the cluster name that's the domain name not the cluster name that's a domain name i'm creating a new domain called db.com the pass this one we can have windows 2016 that's not a problem this is your the directory restored service uh, directory services restored password and this will need to be a complicated so i'm going to say this and i'm going to say this and i'm going to click on next and i'm going to click on next and then 
then it's going to choose the net buyers domain name this would be by default it will be db so i did not enter it it got selected automatically click on next and then it's going to choose the paths the default paths we are okay with this default path so click on next and then it gives us the summary all of that we are going to say like we are going to create a domain called db.com so it gives whatever option we selected dns server yes click on next and then it's going to do the prerequisite checks so wait for the prerequisite checks to finish that prerequisite checks is going to take another maybe 10 seconds or 20 seconds so i'll not yeah that's done all prerequisite checks pass successfully click install to begin installation so now i'm going to click the install button here so this but now right now i'm going to install i'm going to create i'm promoting this server as a dc so that's happening right now once this is done once this is done it's going to go for automatic reboot so you know so wait for this to finish so our work on dc is almost done once this is done what we are going to do is we have to do two more things as i mentioned we need to set up as i already mentioned and i mentioned this couple of times the dc is also a file server so we will create the scuzzy disk the quorum and data disk on our dc that's what i'm going to do so this is happening while this is happening let's go to the node 2 the c1 so c1 all that we have done on c1 is we have done the oob sysprep that's what we have done and as i mentioned once we have done it the host name gets changed to the default value so if i launch the command prompt okay i'll launch the windows powershell and i'll do the same thing here as well on the other server and here if i press the host name it will choose a default host name so let's let the screen appear and i'm going to type host name and as you can see it chose some default name this is not what i gave and here also if i choose the host name then you can see it has changed it to win t something and win f something what we are going to do i'm not going to change the host name now first thing that we need to do is set up the networking and this is very important we should not do any mistake in this networking so the ip address i'm going to change it for the node one it will be 101 the gateway will be 1.1 the dns will be 109 and subnet will be 255.255.255.0 so that's what i'm going to do so change adapter options go here right click on the network open network and this and once it opens i'm going to say change adapter options so right click on it right click on properties right click here change adapter options i'm doing it on both the nodes simultaneously because this is so slow it comes back so slow so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uncheck the ipv6 i'm going to click on ipv4 click on properties use the following ip addresses you remember it was before it was set but we did we did the oobe so it has gone and nine and the default gateway default gateway to be one and again here i changed by mistake i pressed it to this one and click on ok so that's done close it and disable it and enable it and i'll do the same thing here on node 2 uncheck the ipv6 click on ipv4 click on properties click here this ip this is the second box so this ip will be 102 the subnet mask is this the default gateway is 1.1 and the dns server 109 what is the dns server this is the ip of your domain controller remember this is the ip of your domain controller and this is the ip of this server so click on ok click on close and click on disable and click on enable that's done okay now we are going to verify it so ip config so if you do ip config you can see okay for some reason okay so 192.168.1.10225 and default gateway is this this is the node 2 you can see a host name this i have not changed the host name as of now i will change it when i join to the domain and if i do it here you can see that ip config is 101 for the node 1 
255 and the call gateway remains the same. So that's done. So we have configured the IP address as per this. I have not changed the machine name. I will do it when we join the machine to the domain. So both the activity changing the machine name and changing the domain, uh, changing the uh, sorry, jo joining the domain and changing the machine name will be done at the same time. So let's see, as I mentioned, that once the the DC promote domain control is promoted, it's going to go for the reboot. And now, once it's rebooted successfully, I'm going to shut down. So what I'm going to do, I've done a significant amount of steps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a short break. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these machines to somewhere safe. All of these machines I'm going to copy to somewhere safe. The reason of this is like if something happens in the line, it doesn't work, then I can always fall back on this machine. Otherwise, it becomes, you know, whatever I have to do, if I don't do it, if I don't copy these machines, it becomes difficult for me. So that's why I'm going to actually uh, shut down these machines and keep a copy of this. So shut down. You can you can do that in your environment also. So when you reach to a significant level, you have to copy this so that you if you don't have to start it all over again. So I'm going to shut it down both the machines and I'm also going to stop shop the DC once it is done. So I'm going to pause the video and come back once this is done. So what we have done till now is we have set up a domain controller. AD is created. File server is installed. iSCSI uh, target server is installed. We have not add create a shared disk. So not add create a shared disk. On the node one, we have done the generalize. We have not, not add set the host name. So we have not add set the host names. The host names are general and IP address. We have set IP address for this as 101. And here also we have not add set names and we have set the IP address to 102. So this is all that we have done. So let me, this is my domain controller. As you can see that, let me, yeah, as you can see that the db.com, that's the domain. If I come here, if I go to server manager, and if I click on here and if I click on Active Directory Users and Computers, you can see that I have a domain called db.com. That's the domain. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create, I've already created one user called SQLSA. Similarly, I'll create another user called db2admin. The reason of that is because this particular cluster will be used for the for two things, I'll be setting up a db2 cluster. I'll be setting the SQL Server cluster instance as well as always on availability group. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say user must change password. I uncheck it. User cannot change the password. Password never expires. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to give the password some complex password because it's at the AD level. So that's done. And that's done. So the user is created. I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to make this user as I'm going to make this user as the member of the domain admin. This makes life a little easier. So I'm going to make it as a domain admin. So that's done. That's done. Click on apply. Click on OK. So that's done. So we created one domain user. We have we now have two machines. So let me log into the first machine win. 19c1 this is the first machine and i'm logging as an admin this particular machine is still not part of the this particular machine you can see the ip address some ip address the junk ip address it has got ip address of 101 and you can see that this machine is not part of the domain click on properties and you should be able to see this is not part of the domain so now let's let's okay i'll show the same thing for the next machine as well so let me to connect to the second machine win 19 c2 so i'm going to connect to the second machine click on password and i'm going to the second machine and you can see host name is something the ip address is 102 and if i open this and right click on this and click on properties it's not part of the domain so none of this see the do domain okay the domain controller is created domain controller is created but the machines are not part of the domain i can show it to you here also so if you see here computers you can see that there are no computers in the dc right now there are no computers in the dc right now so let me go to node one right so we will join this machine to the domain so click on the properties click on the change settings 
change okay what i'll do i'll give the name the description also matching computer description as c1 the computer name as c1 so this is the c1 as you can see this is win19 c1 domain i'm going to give the address db.com so this is the domain that we have created win19 c1 db.com that's the domain name that we have created click on ok it's going to ask if it gets connected to the uh if it gets connected to the domain if it connects to the domain it's going to ask for the password give the password of the user which is the domain admin you can give sql sa or you can give the db2 admin because both are domain admin so that's now it will fail because the password is incorrect so let's do it again click on ok the password is incorrect so again try sql sa and click test one two three four hash so this is the password click on ok and click on ok so that's done it's now going to it's going to get restarted because the changing the primary dns of this computer field the name will be will remain at db.com the error was specified domain either does not exist or could not be contacted contacted so that's fine i think there's something happened okay i think the problem that happened is because okay let's try to see if that machine appeared i guess it did not appear. yeah it appeared so that's fine okay so that's good so the first machine is joined now we'll go to the second machine i think that password thing actually because of that password thing i got an error so now we are going on the second machine i'm changing this description to this making sure everything remains same so win9c2 domain is db.com and say okay if it gets connected to the if it gets connected to the domain it's going to uh, uh okay so what did it happen yeah so i think i gave something there some other character so give the username uh, this time i will use the db2 admin both are domain admins give the password enter click on ok and it's going to say welcome to this and now it's going to ask for restart the changing the that's fine it's okay then okay say okay say okay say apply and say restart now so now the both the machines are getting restarted and now if i do the refresh then you should be able to see that we got two machines in our domain so the two machines are now part of the domain so let me connect to those two machines back again so win 19 c1 so i'm going to connect to the first and this time i'm going to give the different user so db slash sql essay this uh this is the domain user that we created the domain admin that we created so i'm going to do that and i'm going to say remember me so i'm going to click ok and it's authenticating and you see i did not have a local user sql essay on this machine that's the domain user that got and we are authenticated so right right click on this click on this click on the properties and you can see win 19 c1 and it now it's a part of db.com domain so that's done for the node one and i'll do the same thing for the second machine so i'll go here and i will now connect to the second machine and say show options and i will change the user so when i say connect i'm going to use more choices use a different account domain user db slash sql sa db is our domain sql sa is our domain user i'm going to give the password of sql sa and click ok and i'm going getting authenticated and this is the domain user which means it's successfully connected to the domain so that's good so the machines have joined the two machines have joined to the domain so that is also done and you can see here now what we need to do is we have successfully configured the networking we have configured the pc to the domain log into the scuzzy drive we have not at created the scuzzy drive which means we cannot log into the scuzzy drive so now comes the shared so now let me go to the shared let me go to the domain controller this is the domain controller okay and what i'm going to do on the domain controller so let me show it to you that this is the domain controller so host name you can see that win 19 dc this is the domain controller so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to click on file and storage services click on scuzzy and to create the, this option appears because we have installed the scuzzy target otherwise this option will not appear so we have installed that and i have already shown you how that so click wherever you want to 
create your disk so click here and click on next and give some names so i'm going to give say data first i'll create a quorum disk so quorum of 1 gb so i'm going to create a quorum of 1 gb so next and 1 gb and dynamically expanding click on next other otherwise i'll click on for the quorum i'll say fix size it's a small disk so this is fine new scuzzy target click on next and i will say uh win 19 that's the scuzzy target and click on next and here we have to add the ip addresses of both the servers so 192.168.1.101 this is the ip address of the first node so okay click on add click on ip address 192.168.1.102 this is the ip address of the second box and there is a mistake here so that's why 102 okay that is two dots here okay and that's okay and I, as you can see i have added two ips and click on next leave this click on next and you can see that i'm creating a quorum disk of 1 gb target is win 19 i these are the two ip addresses which are allowed to access this particular quorum disk and say create so that's getting created right now so that's done now once that is done what we are going to do is i'm going to add another disk this this time i'm going to add a data disk click on next and i'll say data disk of 20 gb and click on next and i will say dynamically expanded and i'll say 20 gb uh sorry 20 gb so i'm going to click on next and did i say data 20 yeah okay and click on next and we are going to use the same target so we don't don't have to create because both the servers will accept click next so tw data 20 gb 20 gb these are the two ip addresses which are all going to access this particular storage and i'm going to create and that's done so these are the two scuzzy drives that we created on our windows server so that's done so now what we are going to do so this is this part this is the domain controller we have to set the two scuzzy drives as i mentioned these are the two scuzzy drives, the quorum of 1 gb and data of 220 gb and ip addresses of two, two nodes so that's done this particular thing has to be done on domain controller you can see that this has to be done on domain controller so that's done now what we need to do is we need to log into those SCSI drives on both the nodes. So this one, we have to do this on node one as well as node two. So the node one and node two, we should be able to see the shared folder that we created just now. So let's go to the node one. So we are on node one. So let me show it to you that we are on node one. So command prompt, if it comes, well, okay, so it doesn't come. So there's some problem with the search button uh, and host name. As you can see, this is a node one. We'll go to, we'll search for iSCSI initiator and again that one, okay, so that's fine. So let's go to here, go to Windows Administrative Tools. Here you can see SCSI initiator, right click on it, say yes to the services, They by default they don't run, so that's done. So I'll, and then target, okay, in the target, what we need to do is we need to give the IP address of our domain controller or I can give Win 19 DC, that's the name of our machine, quick connect, and we should be able to see this is the target and done. And and okay, before doing that, okay, it's already done. Okay, connect. Okay, okay, that's done. I should have shown you something to you actually. Um, okay, I'll show it to you on the other other server. So wait, I was too quick. So that's done. So now we'll go to the second box and be the same box steps. So go here go to here and click on iSCSI initiator and and say yes but wait what i'm going to do now is i'm going to say format ah the search button it just doesn't work for some reason um i need to format those two disks so let's see if i can see format here otherwise i'll do here computer management disk management and you can see I got disk 012. Okay, keep a note of this. I got disk 012. I don't have any other disk. So now what I'm going to give is target, which is bin 19 DC. That's where our file server is there. Quick connect. This is done. This is done. And this is done. And you can see I got from 012, I got three and four. Now I got extra two disks. One GB disk, 20 GB disk. These two disks are the shared disks. Okay, these are the two disks which are shared disks. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make them online here. 
and I'm going to make it online. So I'm going to wait for it to become online. So sometimes they don't come online. So just wait for them. Okay, so they are definitely not coming online. So let, I'll try to see if I can get them online on node one. So sometimes they just don't come online. So let's do that. So let me go to the computer management, click on disk management, and try to bring them online. Okay, for some reason, actually, instead of, they, they won't be coming online because what we need to do is the prompt should appear for me, whether this disk should be GPT or MBR, and for some reason that prompt has not appeared. And the reason might be because the disks are shared on both the nodes at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down one of the node. So I'm going to shut down this node. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart this node. So let me restart this node. Okay. And once that machine is restarted, once the node one is restarted, I'm going to logging back to that particular machine. So wait for it to restart. I'm waiting for it to restart. So now that machine is restarted, I'm going to click on this. I'm going to go to Win19 C1, the first node. The second node is in the shutdown state right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to administrative tools, computer management, disk management. And you can see that I got this. I do not know why I only got the third disk. I'm going to choose a GPT, which is a newer format. I should get the fourth disk also. So, okay, one disk came online. So I'm going to try to bring this disk also online. I do not know why that got stuck. Okay, that's fine. So initialize disk and GPT and click on OK. Okay, so I should have done the initialize this first. Okay, so that's done. And I'm going to format it. So new simple volume. So I'm going to say new and this one will be G and I'll say, okay, instead of G, I'll say Q for the quorum. So I know that this is a quorum and click on this and I'll give the name as quorum and quick format and finish. And this one, I'll click on new simple volume, click on next, click on next, G is fine. And I'll say data disk, this is the data disk and click on next, click on next and finish. And that's done. So we have now two disks in our box. And now let's wait for the second node to come online. So give it a minute. So till now, what we have done is the host names we have set and we successfully joined to the domain. IP addresses we have set. We have mapped the SCSI drives. So shared disk were created, shared disk were created, created on domain, map the SCSI drives on node two, map the SCSI drive on node three. And we formatted the SCSI drives we initialize the disk and format it the SCSI drives on one of the nodes. So that's done on, it, it has to be done only on one node because both the nodes are shared. So now what I'm going to do, and now, okay. So one thing that I missed is the next part that we have to do is we have to create the cluster. But what I missed till now is I have not yet installed the failover clustering, actually the role, the most important role. So that I have not done. So I'm going to go to server manager on one node. I'm going to do that via the GUI. So I'm going to say pay, pay, okay, sorry. Add roles and features, click on next, click on next, click on next, click on next. And here you can see failover clustering. I'm going to say add feature next. And if it needs a restart, I'm going to say yes, and then install. So I'm going to, I'm running the, the failover cluster installation on one node via the GUI. So that's done. I'm going to log into the second node. So I'm going to go to the second node. So that's I'm logging in as the domain admin. So I'm doing that. And what I'll do is we have to now install. So I'm going to use the power scale, sorry, PowerShell, not the power scale, PowerShell. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go here. 
and I'm going to launch the PowerShell right click on it more run as admin so that's done and I'm going to whatever command that I copied I'm going to hit the enter so now the, it's installing the failover cluster on the first node sorry second node via the PowerShell while it's installing the on this it's installing okay not on the DC it's I guess it's already restarted that machine so now once the C1 is restarted I'm going to log into the C1 so the C2 is is going to prompt me for this so now let me go to the C1 so let me log in so I'm logging in and let's see if the failover cluster okay if the payload cluster got installed so we'll see a role here and let's see payload cluster manager and you can see payload cluster manager so now the last part okay it's still installation started so it's still installing okay maybe it's finalizing so let's give it a minute okay and that's i guess that's done so what we are going to do now is do the validate configuration so let's see what we are here so you say you must restart the server to finish the installation process so let's do that so let's give it a restart so whatever is two option you want to choose so second node is getting restarted so now the next first thing that we are going to do is we are going to validate our configuration cancel so i okay let's close this go to the tools go to the failure cluster manager and click on validate configuration and if the validation configuration is so we have to browse so win 19c1 that's the machine name the first machine name so i'm going to copy it add it that's added and win 19c2 add it and it's waiting for it to be added maybe it's still getting restarted or maybe it's still getting the cluster services installed so that's why it's not responding so let me connect to that and let's see where we are with this okay that's appeared so the cluster roles got installed so let's click on next run all test so we i chose run all test that is recommended click on next it's going to run the network test the ip trash inventory test and the storage test that's going to do click on next and the test has initiated so the the test is going to take some time right now the time is 8 44 so once the test is completed then i'll come back and then if the, there are errors we will fix those errors if there are no errors then we are going to create our cluster so let's give it a minute and i'll pause the video and come back as you can see the validation is validated testing has completed for the test you selected you should give you the warning so lex looks like there are some warnings most of them validate all drivers sign warning and there is a network connect communication this is important so we are going to see what it is update level that's okay and system configuration that's okay and then there are some you know so what we are going to do is we are going to view the report so let's see if uh let's see okay and we are going to view the report and let's see what warnings we got so network success and success system configuration i'm going to ignore it these are system drivers and software levels that's fine the network is most important so i'm going to see what warnings we got so only warning that we got is here validate network configuration so i'm going to see uh only one pair of network that's fine basically what has happened is like i did not create a heartbeat network the public and private i'm using the public network only they, i'm not using the private network that actually increases the complexity because i have to set up the two networks two network adapter this is my test system in your production system do not do this this is only for the testing purpose and one ip the public ip is fine we do not need a heartbeat ip or private ip for the heartbeat so that's fine but do not do this in the production but this for the test system this is okay and we can safely ignore this warning so we are good so looks like the cluster configuration is done so now what i'm going to say i'm going to say create the cluster now i'm going to say i could what i can do is i can close this and i can choose the create cluster or i can just you know do this right now so click on next 
and it asked me the cluster name. So what I'm going to give is Win19C. The Win19C is my cluster name and give the IP. Uh, so let me give 110. That's the IP for my cluster and click next. So I'm clicking the next button and it's going to add C1 and C2 into the cluster. Cluster name is Win19C and IP address of the cluster would be 110 and I have chose add all eligible storage to the cluster. So whatever storage is available is going to add to the cluster. So I'm going to the click next and the cluster creation has started. The time in my watch is 850. I'm going to pause the video and come back once the cluster creation is done. So uh, keep a note on the watch. It's 8. Sorry, the time. Okay, the time on the system is 850. So my system and my this doesn't match. Okay, interesting. Okay, anyway, that's not a problem. I'm, I did not have to do. The cluster is created. So click on finish and the cluster should appear. And uh, you can see we have successfully, we have got two nodes here. 19C1 and 19C2. These are the two nodes and storage. You can see we got, we should have two disks. One disk, which is the one GB disk that went into the quorum and the second disk is the data disk. So we got two disks. So this is this was a very long length, long video, lengthy video, whatever it is. Sorry. So this was a very lengthy video. We have now created our cluster right now. Our cluster is up and running. We have not added any roles. We just created a two node cluster C1 and C2. There are two disks in the cluster. One is the quorum disk and one is the data disk 20 GB disk. These disks are coming from the domain controller. So my life, I have made it very simple and I have made your life also very simple. If you follow this particular tutorial and if you follow the steps that I have mentioned in this particular document, of course, this particular document will be shared in the in the YouTube link so you can follow this particular link. And if you follow the tutorial, then you should be able to create your cluster using the virtual box easily. It will work. I can guarantee you that it will work. So with this, I will stop the tutorial. In this particular tutorial, we saw step-by-step -step setup of Microsoft Windows 2019 failover cluster. I used the, I, for this particular setup, I have used Windows 2019 evaluation, VirtualBox 6.1.30. These both are free. And this particular setup is done in a such a way that the DC is your domain controller plus file server, the iSCSI file server. The C1 is your first node. The C2 is second node. I have only used the public IP. I have not used the private IP. In your production environment, make sure that you use the private IP for the heartbeat to make your life easy and to make my life easy. I have chose to do it only via one IP. This is the testing. I just wanted to, to teach you how to set up the cluster. And this is how you do it in your virtual box. So now your cluster is ready. I'm going to use this cluster. So there are more videos coming. I'm going to use this cluster for three things. One, the Windows, the SQL Server failover cluster. So I'm going to do that. The second, I'm going to use this cluster for always on availability groups. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to use this cluster for the DB2 cluster. So I'm going to set up the DB2 on as a HA service, the cluster service. So I'm going to crack out three more videos or on this particular cluster or many more on this particular cluster. I hope you found this particular tutorial useful. Thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial. Bye bye and uh, bye bye. And I just wanted to end this particular video. If you like my channel, if you like the content that I'm recording, please press the like button and also subscribe to my channel. And if you have any comments, if you if you want me to improve on something, do pass in the comments and I'll take a note of it. And when I when the time permits, I will improve upon my recording and improve upon the content that I'm putting here. Thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial. Bye bye till then.